miscarriage? Even after underdoing infertility treatment and getting pregnant? What have you done? My mother-in-law blamed me for the miscarriage. Her face turned red. Her face turned her face turning red. It's probably because you didn't take care of your body. As if not being able to have a child wasn't hard enough. Now this. You really are useless. No, that's not true. The doctor said it can happen with a certain probability. Shut up. If you, as my daughter-in-law, can't even bear a child, then get out of here. After all the torment I've endured, and just having suffered a miscarriage, to treat me like this, I can't take it anymore. As I started to shed tears and attempt to protest, my husband defended me with an angry expression. Mom, what are you saying? There is no need for her to leave. Fine then. We'll cut ties. I'll cut ties with the daughter-in-law, who can't even bear grandchildren. My mother-in-law shouted those words at me and gave me a final menacing glare. She left the room. After that, I had no contact with my mother-in-law for three years. And we didn't meet. However, she suddenly appeared before me in a wheelchair. I became in need of care after being involved in a traffic accident. That's why you should take care of me. I looked down at her and said, Huh, didn't we cut ties with each other? My name is Ivy, and I am 33 years old this year. I have been working as a caregiver even before getting married, and after marriage, I continued to work at the same workplace. I recently got certified as a care manager. So my main job is to come up with care plans for my patients. My husband Dylan is an office worker about the same age as me and we met through a friend. Dylan graduated from a top university and works for a large corporation. At first, I thought there was a mismatch between him and me as I only have a high school education. But Dylan continued to express his love for me we had a good relationship, and after two years of dating, Dylan proposed to me. Ivy, please marry me. Let's become a family. Thank you, Dylan. I'm truly happy. I was at the height of my happiness at this time. I never imagined what would happen next. After accepting the proposal, we went to Dylan's parents' house to make a marriage introduction. Dylan's father passed away when he was in high school due to an illness. Since he is an only child, his mother lives alone in their family home. Nice to meet you. I'm Ivy. Standing at the entrance of my in-law's house, I greeted my mother-in-law nervously. Hmm, are you Dylan's partner? My mother-in-law scrutinized me from head to toe. I want to marry her. Upon hearing Dylan's words, my mother-in-law smiled at him. Well, well, Dylan, we need to get to know this person first. My mother-in-law addressed me as I nervously sat on the couch. Ah, oh, your name is Ivy, right? Which university did you graduate from? Um, well, I'm sorry, I didn't attend a university. I graduated from a local vocational school. Well, my mother-in-law visibly frowned her bro and covered her mouth. Not even attending university nowadays. Were you raised in a very poor family? Uh-huh. Mom, what are you saying? Well, isn't it? Or it is because your grades weren't good enough to attend university? My mother-in-law questioned me with a frowned brow. I responded as best I could. My mother worked in caregiving. She always said it was a challenging but rewarding job. I grew up watching her in that role, so I wanted to walk the same path. Ivy works really hard at her job and has ambition. I think that's wonderful about her too. 
as Dylan supported me. My mother-in-law's expression became even more unpleasant. Caregiving? Did you say you were currently working in caregiving? Does that involve changing old people's diapers? Yes. I assist patients with their daily lives. That's not some smelly, dirty, low-level job. Huh? Even though caregiving is a job that anyone can do, it's not spoken of as something amazing. I could do nothing but be dumbfounded by my mother-in-law, who completely looked down on me. He continued to speak. Dylan said he's bringing his marriage partner. I thought it would be someone wonderful, but someone who couldn't even go to college, and someone who works in caregiving. It's disappointing. What are you saying, Mom? Well, isn't it, Dylan? Maybe you should reconsider now. Should I help you find someone wonderful? Enough already. Let's go, Ivy. Dylan slammed the table, stood up, and pulled my arm. But, but, Dylan, I was honestly flustered as well. But my mother-in-law seemed surprised by the fact that Dylan, who is usually calm, displayed his anger so openly. Dylan, what's wrong? Did something bother you? Mom, you're being extremely disrespectful to Ivy. No matter what anyone says, I'm gonna marry Ivy. Dylan, Dylan's clear declaration made me feel happy. Then, my mother-in-law let out a deep sigh. Ah, <sighs> fine. If Dylan insists on it, I'll approve of the marriage, Mom. But in return, Ivy, make sure you fulfill your duty as a wife. Have children quickly. Understood? It, it, yes. And so, Dylan and I were acknowledged by our respective parents, and decided to register our marriage. We rented an apartment, considering the distance from our workplaces. But I was a little concerned about it, being close to my in-laws' house. I wanted to avoid getting involved with that mother-in-law as much as possible. It seemed like she didn't like me, and anyway, she shouldn't be interfering. My hopes didn't last long, as my mother-in-law started visiting our home almost every day, and began making snide remarks about various things. Ivy, there's dust accumulating on the curtain rail. Oh, I'm sorry. I have work on weekdays, so I was planning to do it on a weekend. Don't make excuses when you don't even have much work to do. It, yes, I'm sorry. Such exchanges have become commonplace in our daily lives. Moreover, my mother-in-law would come over during the time when I return from work. As if it were natural, she would have dinner with us. Ivy, what is this seasoning? What did you learn at your parents' house? Mom, don't say things like that. It tastes perfectly fine. No, Dylan, it's not good because you spoil her. I'll be strict. You see. Yes, I'm sorry. After my mother-in-law left, Dylan apologized to me. Ivy, I'm sorry about my mom. It must be suffocating, right? No, it's true that I am an inadequate wife. Besides, your mother is all alone. She might feel lonely. That was the only response I could give. Rejecting my mother-in-law, who rings the doorbell almost every day, it's something I cannot do. Furthermore, after a year of marriage, my mother-in-law started saying things like this. My friend Mrs. Smith just became a grandmother the other day. Oh, congratulations to her! My response excited my mother-in-law, and Mr. Davis and Mrs. Miller also have grandchildren. I'm the only one without grandchildren. Well, you two are already in your thirties, right? Yet you still haven't had children. We have our own pace. 
If you keep talking leisurely like that, you'll never have children. Hurry up and give birth to a child, so that I can have a grandchild. Understood? It, yes. My mother-in-law started urging me to have a grandchild every time she saw my face. I felt the pressure myself as we were struggling to conceive. Dylan reassured me that there is no need to rush, but age is still a factor. We decided to visit an infertility clinic together. There, we were told that I have a difficult time getting pregnant. However, with diligent treatment, there is still a possibility of having a child. I was shocked by this result and ended up crying in front of Dylan. Dylan, I'm sorry. I'm just not in the right body for this. Well, what are you talking about, Ivy? I actually think it's perfectly fine for just the two of us to live together. No, I still want to have a baby with you, Dylan. I'll undergo fertility treatment. Uh, I see. I understand. But let's not push ourselves too hard. And so, our journey of fertility treatment began. I regularly visited the hospital, enduring painful tests and treatment. I took medication and received injections, but I wasn't getting pregnant. Even after two years of marriage, the situation remained unchanged, and I continued to be attacked by my mother-in-law. My stress gradually accumulated. We decided to move from conventional infidelity treatments to advanced ones. Specifically, we decided to invest around $3,000 for IVF. It required not only a financial burden, but also a significant physical toll. However, I was exhausted from my mother-in-law's relentless give-me-a-grandchild attacks, and I couldn't give up on having a child myself. The first IVF attempt didn't succeed, but on the second try, I finally became pregnant. When I saw the positive result on the pregnancy test in the bathroom, I couldn't help but let out a cry of joy. Finally, finally, I could get pregnant. I have to cherish and raise this baby with care. As I discarded the pregnancy test in the bathroom trash and washed my hands outside, the doorbell rang. Ivy, please open the door. Once again, it's my mother-in-law. I reluctantly let her into the house as usual. Since the positive result just appeared, and I haven't confirmed it at the hospital, it's better not to tell her yet. Just as I decide to keep it a secret from my mother-in-law, Ivy, are you pregnant? She asked me like that. Huh? But look, I found this in the bathroom. In her hand was the pregnancy test that I had just thrown away. Did she actually rampage through the toilet trash? To stoop that low? As I was in shock, my mother-in-law blurted out these words. I always thought you were useless, unable to get pregnant. But now you finally did it. Now I can have a grandchild too. Oh, how wonderful. Just as I was speechless, Dylan returned home. I'm back. Oh Dylan, that's wonderful. It seems Ivy is finally pregnant. What? Ivy? Is it true? Um, yes. I just got a positive result on the pregnancy test. But it's still early. Really? I'm so happy. Faced with Dylan's joy, I couldn't say anything at that moment. That night, I decided to talk to Dylan. Hey, Dylan. Getting a positive result on the test doesn't guarantee a successful pregnancy in the early stages. There is a high possibility of miscarriage. Is that so? Yeah. That's why I thought it would be best to keep it a secret from your mother for now. But then she found the test in the toilet. Mom is looking forward to her grandchildren. I'm sure she'll adore them. Yeah. I went to bed with anxiety waiting on me. The next day, 
I went to the OBGYN clinic, and it was confirmed that I was pregnant. However, two weeks later, I received this news. We couldn't detect the baby's heartbeat. In other words, I had a miscarriage in the early stages of pregnancy. After the surgery, when I returned home, I broke down in tears. Dylan had a solemn expression on his face and gently struck my back. Ivy, for now, take your time to rest. Gather yourself before moving forward. Dylan, I'm sorry. Truly sorry. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Unfortunate timing. It was the time when my mother-in-law would usually visit. Let's ask her to leave today. I stopped Dylan from doing so. I need to explain the situation to your mom. As my mother-in-law entered the house, she was startled by the sight of my tear-strained face. Why are you crying? Could it be? Yes, I had a miscarriage. There was a brief moment of silence after I uttered those words. Just as Dylan was about to say something, my mother-in-law spoke up. Miscarriage? After undergoing fertility treatment and finally getting pregnant, you had a miscarriage? What did you do to cause this? Huh? Her face turned bright red as she approached me. It's probably because you didn't take care of yourself properly. As if it wasn't enough that you couldn't have children. Now this has happened. You really are a useless daughter-in-law. Th that's not true. Miscarriages can happen with a certain probability, as the doctors have explained. Shut up! If you can't even give birth to a child as a daughter-in-law, then get out of here! After enduring her constant bullying and now facing a recent miscarriage, I couldn't take it anymore. As I tried to protest through my tears, Dylan stepped in to protect me with an expression of anger. What are you saying, Mom? Ivy doesn't need to leave. Fine, then let's cut ties. I'm cutting ties with a daughter-in-law who, who won't bear me grandchildren. She shouted those words, glaring at me one last time, before storming out of the room. Then, my mother-in-law really stopped coming to our house. My husband Dylan was also quite angry with my mother-in-law's words and actions, to the point that he didn't even try to contact her. I couldn't forgive what she said, but to be honest, I felt relieved that we no longer had to interact with her. The emotional wounds from the miscarriage didn't heal easily. However, I was gradually trying to move forward and overcome it. Three years passed by during that time. Just when I had almost forgotten my mother-in-law's face, she suddenly appeared at our house. And what's more, she was in a wheelchair. Oh, Ivy, it's been a while, hasn't it? Um, what happened to you? Never mind that. Can you let me into the house? I struggled a bit, but I let her into the house. It seems that my mother-in-law's right hand and right leg don't move properly. You see? I was involved in a traffic accident. I was hospitalized because of it. But I have residual effects. And now, I need care. My mother-in-law started talking non-stop without considering my feelings or opinions. So, you should take care of me. Bathing and going now are difficult for me, you know? Huh? I couldn't help but raise my voice. Seeing my reaction, my mother-in-law continued her tirade. Since you are a daughter-in-law, it's only natural for you to take care of your mother-in-law. You're working in caregiving, aren't you? And yet, as a wife who can't even have children, I'm asking you to take on a role. Regarding that, we did cut ties, right? Yes, but I'm saying I'm willing to reconsider. It's fine. Please take your leave. What? What's that supposed to mean? 
Are you abandoning me? My mother in law seemed genuinely surprised while I looked down at her with a cold stare. While I was being constantly bullied and hurt after experiencing a miscarriage, it was you who told me to get out, useless. Right? Why should I be the one to take care of someone like you? Or are you going to abandon your relatives who need nursing care? You are a devil's wife, aren't you? I'm fine with being the devil's wife. Please leave me alone. I pushed my mother in law's wheelchair towards the entrance and she started screaming. At that moment, the front door was open from the outside. Ivy, I'm home. Huh? Mom? Dylan? Huh? Who is that child? My mother in law froze as she saw Dylan holding the child in his arms. Who? This is our daughter, Emma. Dylan took her to the park. I held our daughter firmly in my arms as I received her from Dylan. What? A child? I didn't hear about this. Upon hearing that, my mother in law's eyes widened. Yes, after cutting ties with my mother in law, the stress seemed to disappear. Thanks to that, we quickly conceived the child. The child was born safely, and our daughter is already two years old. Well, I didn't say anything. I can't believe someone would utter such abusive words to Ivy. It's not what I would expect from a mother. D Dylan? You know how much I long to hold my grandchild, right? I'm aware of that, but even so, I can't let someone who hurts my wife off the hook. So, what do you need today? As Dylan casually said that, my mother-in-law's mouth was left agape. I explained the situation to my husband. Upon hearing this, Dylan furrowed his brow. There's no way I would let Ivy take care of you. Just go home already. W what are you saying? That's right. I'm going to live here together. I want to be with my grandchild too. Ivy can take care of me. It's as simple as that. I said we cut ties, didn't I? I'm sorry, but I can't live together. I won't provide any caregiving. My mother-in-law squeaks and grits her teeth and tries to grab me. Dylan stopped it. Got it. I'll find a facility for you. D Dylan? Just quietly enter the facility. That would be the best for you, right? Now, go home. Dylan took his mother, who was causing a commotion in her wheelchair without any argument. Afterwards, his mother moved into a facility he had found. Initially, she contacted us repeatedly, asking to visit and see her grandchild. However, as we continued to ignore her, those requests gradually ceased. Neither Dylan nor I have visited her, and we have no intention of doing so in the future. She will spend her old age alone, with a disabled body but I have no sympathy for her. However, I do not sympathize with her. With her personality, she will find a way to persist stubbornly anywhere she goes. She may not be liked by those around her, but on the other hand, our family of three enjoys a peaceful and happy life. Recently, I discovered that I am pregnant with our second child. It seems that this time it will be a boy. I intend to prioritize our family's happiness and cherish our lives moving forward.